David did not kill Goliath by a sling or a stone. He killed Goliath by what he carried in his heart. He had this assurance. He had this faith. He had this confidence in his God that God is able to do all things. Welcome to the Resurgence Messages Podcast. We gather and minister regularly for the purpose of reaching people, reviving churches, and releasing leaders. Our prayer is that this message will inspire you to arise for the kingdom of God. For more information on the ministry of resurgence and how you can take part, check out liveresurgence.com. Well, tonight I want to take your attention to a familiar passage in the scripture. It's very familiar to all of us. I'm going to take you to 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to read a couple of verses there, and then we will get going. 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to read verse 32 and 33. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a boy. He has been fighting the giant. Goliath has been fighting, uh, fighting man from his youth. And I'm going to read verse 34 as well. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, verse 35, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. I'm going to title my message, Conquering Giants. And the subtitle is Four Conversations. Four Conversations. Conquering Giants. We all face giants in our life. We all face giants in our life. There are giants of different sizes, shapes, and forms. There are emotional giants, physical giants, medical giants. There are financial giants. There are all kinds of giants. Giants are anything that overwhelms us and you know, create the emotional insecurity. Giants make you feel that you are not enough, that you are inadequate. And giants will try to intimidate you by showing its size and its stature. Come on, is there anybody who has faced some giants in their life? Have you faced some giants in your life? Amen. I have. I have faced some giants in my life. Amen. So here is Israel facing a giant named Goliath. Goliath comes and starts threatening the people of Israel. Every day for 40 days, giant Goliath will come and stand on their mountaintop and will threaten the people of Israel and would say, choose a man and choose a man and fight against me. And if he is able to kill me, then he can have the whole land of Philistine. This is an unusual war because this is not the type of war that Israel is used to. Usually the whole army will go against the other army. But here they are saying, pick a man, pick a man, pick a person to fight against me. And when they came to the battlefield, all of a sudden they are seeing the children of Israel. When they came to the battlefield, they are seeing this giant and they are so afraid or so intimidated by the giant. And when the giant speaks and says, you know, pick a man and come and fight against me. Here is the people of Israel, the soldiers of Israel running away from the battleground. They are so afraid. They are so scared. For 40 days, this giant came and threatened the people of Israel. And there's a description about this giant. This giant wore this big bronze coat. And, you know, the Bible goes on to give the description of the weight of this coat. This coat is about 5,000 or 6,000 shekels, which means about 125 pounds. Can you, can you imagine? 125 pounds. He's wearing a coat. And then on top of that, he's wearing tight pads made of bronze. 
And then he's, he's carrying a javelin and the javelin is so big that when he slung it in the back, I mean, I, um, he carried it so easy, but he was about 12 pounds, even just the head of that javelin. We're talking about, you know, this humongous man, this giant, and he's having all this sophisticated uh, weaponry. He's got these sleeves and he's got this coat and he's got this bronze shields and all of that stuff, you know. And here is the armor bearer carrying a big shield as well, trying to protect this Goliath, this giant. And he can't, I mean, can you imagine? This is so heavy, 125 pounds coat. And then the javelin, so heavy. And can you imagine how he's walking? I don't know. Like, I mean, he can't even walk. He can barely walk, but he'll come. And the, the armor bearer and some of the soldiers, the Philistine, Philistine soldiers will prop him up and make him stand there. And he will just open up his mouth and blurt out threats. And the people of Israel, they hear the threat. They see the sophisticated armor and they will run this went on for 40 days and here comes our young adult here comes our hero his name is David David comes to the scene because his father Jesse sent him to come to inquire the welfare of his older brothers his older brothers especially three of them are serving in the army the oldest one's name is Eliab. And the second one's name is Abinadab. And the third one is named Shama. And these three brothers, all the brothers are serving Saul. And so David, the younger brother, the youngest of all, the eighth son of Jesse, comes to the battleground inquiring about the welfare, inquiring the welfare of his older brothers. And when he comes to the, comes to inquire, comes to the battlefield, he sees this giant and he sees this huge commotion and he sees the soldiers of Israel so afraid and so nervous. And one of the soldiers begin to talk, the supplier of the army begins to have a conversation with David. There are four conversations in this chapter. From verse 26 to 29, there is a conversation. And then from verse 32 onwards, there's another conversation. And then there's verse, you know, there's another conversation from verse 35, I believe. And then from, or sorry, 26 to 29, and 29 to 32, and 32 to 35, three conversations. And the fourth conversation happens from verse 45. The first conversation is with the soldier. And the second conversation is with Eliab, his older brother. The third conversation is with Saul, the king of Israel, who is afraid, who is nervous. And the fourth conversation is with Goliath. And when you listen to these four conversations, you can hear the weapon or you can see the concealed weapon David carried. David did not defeat Goliath. I'm jumping the guns here, but David did not kill Goliath by a, a sling or a stone. David killed Goliath by the power of his God. By the power of the name of his God. Come on, can I get an amen tonight? <laughs> David did not kill Goliath by a sling or a stone. He killed Goliath by what he carried in his heart. He had this assurance. He had this faith. He had this confidence in his God that God is able to do all things. Come on, can I get some people who will shout back at me and say, my God is able to do all things. Come on, is there anybody who is bold enough tonight to say, my God is able? My God. Oh, hallelujah. My God is able. I'm going to say that one more time. My God is able. My God is able. Come on, this session, can I get some of you to say it back with me? My God is able. My God is able. Yes. yes, he is. So David comes and then starts his first conversation. And this first conversation reveals the secret of slaying your giants, conquering your giants. And in the first conversation, he talks to the soldiers and, uh, and the supplier. And the supplier begins to say, you know what? There's a giant, there's Goliath, and he's scaring the people of Israel. We don't know what to do. Everybody's running away. We are out of ideas. We are not strong enough. We don't even have swords. We don't have medals. I mean, look at that guy. He's carrying all the medals on planet Earth. 
we don't have any of it. <laughs> and um, David asked this question back. David asked him, what is the king promising? What will the man get who kills this giant? See, everybody's running away. Everybody's running away. And when everybody's running away, David is asking this question, what will I get when I kill this giant? Yeah. Hey, I like that. The secret that I came to know from that conversation is this, that, you know, in, when you're dealing with defeats, can you still see victory in midst of your defeat? Can you still have a vision of the victory that is coming on the other side? Come on. When everybody is seeing defeat, when everybody is seeing crisis and chaos, can you see what is waiting for you on the other side? Hallelujah. You know, Travis earlier said this one line, eyes of faith. I like that, eyes of faith. Can you see with the eyes of faith what is waiting for you on the other side of this battle? I like that verse in Hebrews chapter 12. In Hebrews 12 verse 3, it says, set your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your race. And then it goes on to say, look at him, because he demonstrated this amazing quality. That while he was on the cross going through pain, he endured pain looking at the joy on the other side. Amen. While you and I are going through defeats and when, when you and I are going through crisis and COVID and quarantine and all this kind of stuff, can we still see victory waiting for us on the other side? There are naysayers and doom speakers who are saying that the church will fail and the church won't have the same kind of crowd. And I, it may be true, I don't know. But I am not here to say that the church will not do well after COVID. I am here to declare the church of the living God will rise up again. Christians will rise up again. We will go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Is there anybody who will join together with me and say, I'm looking at the victory on the other side. So there is this fight and here is David asking, what will I get? What will I get? And this question amazed and surprised everybody. So the word got to King Saul. And then he wants to know, David wants to know, what are the rewards that I will get? And the king's promises were this. One will get, or will, the king will give great wealth. He will get great wealth. Second, king will give his daughter to the man who slays this giant. Three, his family will be tax free. Wow. <laughs> number one, number one, he'll get, get great wealth. When everybody is looking at defeat, David is looking at the restaurant he's going to go after this. When everybody is looking at defeat, you know, David is looking at. The store he's going to go to and buy his brand new clothes. When everybody is looking at defeat, David is looking at the reward that is coming on the other side. I tell you, if the king or if there's a battle that promises me all of those things, I'll like, I'm taking it. I don't care if I die or not, but I'm taking it because all these good things are coming my way if I win this battle. Wow. Wow. Well, great wealth. I lied on man. All of you look so pious, like a wealth pastor. You're so materialistic. You're talking about clothes and restaurant. And I give it to mission. Go, um, I will do that too. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Secondly, king will give his daughter. That girl, the girl who appeared in times of Israel, that mortal looking girl. The girl who was wearing the high, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm going too much with the description here. That girl. If I'm going to get that girl, I am in. That was enough to tempt David. And we know David's story. 
that was, that was enough, enough to tempt them. They said, I'm here. I'm going to get that girl. And third, my family is going to be tax free. Why am I explaining all these things? I'm saying all these things to say this. When everybody is looking at defeat and looking like how, you know, it's going to be sad and it's going to be so bad. Here is David looking at the victory on the other side. Can I get some people to, you know, shout back at me. I'm looking at the victory that is waiting for me on the other side. When we are facing, when we are facing devil, when we are facing our giants, when we are going through difficulties, one of the mindsets that we need to have is this. This is not our to address. This is our through address. This is not our, this is not our to destination. This is just a passage through. That means that I'm not going to end here. I'm just going to go through this. I'm not going to end here. My life is not going to end here. My family is not going to end here. My health is not going to end here. I'm just going to go through this. Come on, can I get some people to join together with me and say, I like interaction. You're so quiet tonight, but I just want to get you speaking back to me. <laughs> Would you say it with me tonight? I'm just going through this. I'm just going through this. This is now my destination. I'm just going through this and I'm going to come out on the other side victorious. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Come on. Can I get some people to say it with me? I'm a conqueror. I'm a conqueror. <laughs> Hallelujah. The second secret that I understood from the conversation that David had is uh, with his Brother, older brother Elia. The second secret that I gathered from that conversation, I'll tell you after. <laughs> David comes and David meets with his brother and Elia stands and, and Elia is angry. <laughs> Elia is like burning with anger. Elia is like, I know you are evil intent. I know you are wicked. I know you're so conceited. I know why you are here. Oh, uh, don't you have some sheep to feed? Don't you want to go back to your father's few little sheep? And, 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 and he's belittling and he's mocking Elia or mocking David. And David did not stay there talking to Eliab for too long. David just went. But David said this one line that is so interesting. David said, now what have I done? That one word now, that one word now is so loaded. That one word now. <laughs> because I have people sometimes, well, not now, in the past. I have people in the church, you know, come back and, and every week there's something wrong. <laughs> every week some sort of a complaint. And when they complain and they just, you know, I always like winching and whining every week. And after a few weeks, the next time when they come, I'm like, what's the problem now? That is a subtle way of telling him, you're always problem. You always carry some sort of a problem. Come on. You're all so quiet. You're not one of those people. You're not. <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and so David says, now what have I done? Why? Because every time when Eliab sees David, there's always something to blame David. There's always some sort of an attack. There's always some sort of a put down. And David knows that very well. And he says, now what is the problem? I just came here. Now what is the problem? The greatest pain that comes in your life is when your close people, your own family rejects you. If people far away say something against you, it's no problem. No, fine. Who cares? But when people who are close to you say something against you, that hurts you. And often, we try to convince people who have made up their mind to be against you. Oh. Have you ever had moments in your life where you really tried hard and you tried again and again to, and to convince people who, uh, who have chosen to be against you? No matter what you say, no matter what you do, they're always against you. They will always find something against you. They will gaslight everything that you would say. Come on. They will compliment you, but that compliment is like a backhanded slap. Hello, you don't know nothing. You don't have those kind of people. Praise God for that. <laughs> Amen. 
David did not stay there long talking to Eliab. David left that place very quickly. Let me give you this example. I was going from, from Edmonton to India. And then I was going for India, you know, from Seattle to Dubai. I got into the plane, Emirates plane. And uh, once I got in there, this lady stepped into the plane with one, two, three. I lost count. I mean, she <laughs> stepped into the plane with quite a few kids. All the kids were so well behaved except this one kid. This kid will not stop crying. Cry and cry and cry and cry. I mean, I, I thought at some point the kid will stop. The kid gets tired, you know. But, but this child was having, I mean, having a, I don't know, whatever it was like, this child was going crazy, crying and crying. And so I thought, well, I'm going to put my headphone on. I put my headphone on, but I can still hear the screaming, screeching, sound of this little child. And I try to sleep, I can't sleep. I try to listen to something, I can't listen to it. I try to you know, bump up the volume so high, but I still cannot hear anything because this child is really crying. I'm thinking, mom, give the child some sort of, a, you know, I don't know, grab or something. Uh, <laughs> baby, please don't email me after. Please nobody email me after. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, after a few hours, I went to see one of the people who, were, who was actually, you know, traveling with us. And so I went and looked at this older person. And this person was actually nicely sleeping, like quiet, like comfortably sleeping, you know, probably snoring, like really deep sleep. And so, you know, I wanted to wake up the person, but I thought, no, I, <laughs> I'll let the person sleep. So we got to Dubai. When we got to Dubai, I asked this older person, I mean, how come you could sleep when there is so much noise and when that child was screaming so loudly? I couldn't. And so the older person, this older person began to explain to me a secret. This person said, well, Pastor Dino, you see this headphone? This is a Bose headphone. <laughs> when you flick the switch, it's noise canceling. And so when I flick the switch, I cannot hear anything that happens on the outside. I'm just sleeping. Can I, can I tell you something? We need to have a noise cancellation switch in our spirit. When Eliab's and naysayers will speak gloom and speak negativity, we need to flick that switch on and say, you know what? I'm going to choose who will speak to me. I'm going to choose who will speak into my spirit. Come on, can I get some young people to join together with me and say, you know what? I'm not going to listen to all voices. I'm not going to you know, listen to that person, this person, and turn all all sides everywhere. I'm going to listen to chosen voices in my life. One of the dangers of this time is this. You know, everybody's got a YouTube channel. Everybody's speaking. And everybody's like vlogging, blog, which is a great thing. But the problem is this. You know, we are hearing too many confusing voices. Too many conspiracy theories. I think it is time for us to get plugged into a church. To have some leaders that we trust and have them speak into our life. Hey, I hear no amen. Come on, can I get some people who would say an amen tonight? Hallelujah. Eliab would always discourage you. You need somebody who will affirm you. You need somebody who will push you forward. You, will, you need somebody who sees your calling deep inside, who sees what is deposited in your spirit. We don't need no Eliabs. We need some people who will encourage you and spur you and affirm you to go forward and accomplish all that God has put into your spirit. Amen. Amen. Do you know that when you look at that passage... That is the shortest conversation. Shortest conversation. Shortest conversation. All the other conversations are a little longer. But this one is the shortest conversation. Because David knew trying to convince his older brother Eliab is going to be a futile effort. You know what we do often? We, see, we, we have an assignment. We have a vision. We are trying to reach our destination. But then there will always be Eliab right in the middle. And we get stuck convincing. 
But you know, but the Lord was, but it's a waste of time. It's a waste of effort. They're not going to encourage you. Instead, let's just go around. Go around to the vision that God is calling us into. Come on. Is there anybody who will join together with me tonight? Can I get some people to say it with me? I'm going forward. I'm going forward to my destiny. I'm going forward to where God is calling me. I'm going forward and killing and slaying some giants. I'm going forward and fulfill everything that God has promised in my life. Come on, is there anybody who will put your hands together? Bless the Lord one more time. So the second secret that I understood from this passage is this. Choose who will speak into your life. Choose carefully. Amen. Amen. Ben Hill, thank you. <laughs> Amen. The third conversation is conversation with Saul. David now goes and meets with King Saul and have this conversation. And Saul says, come on, David, you're too young. You're only 17. You can't do this. This guy saw, or Goliath, he is, he is battle hardy. He is big. He is bold. He is bad. He is terrorizing. He has killed so many people. He is a giant. How old are you? 17. He's been fighting for the last 70 years. And 17 year old, you gonna come and fight this giant? No, no. <laughs> No, David. David says, no, no, no. If God is for me, I will fight and bring down this Goliath. Are, 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 are you with me? <laughs> and so here is, here is Saul trying to dissuade David from going forward. Using other people's experiences. Look at them. They tried it. They failed. David is, or Saul is giving all kinds of stories of people who have failed. Look at them, you know, they couldn't do it. Then how can you do it? If they couldn't do it, they were stronger than you, you they are much experienced than you, they are bigger than you, they got skills better than you, they've been you know, going to university longer than you, uh, they got doctorate and MBB or whatever else it is, they got a, you know, title before and title at the end. They couldn't do it. If they couldn't do it, how are you going to do it, David? Here is Saul trying to dissuade David by using other people's experience. And look at the reply that David gives. David says, King, you are talking about other people's experience, but let me talk about my experience. A while ago, a lion came and tried to attack, tried to eat one of my sheep. And so when the lion came and jumped upon one of my sheep, I went after that lion. And when I went after that lion, the lion dropped the sheep, but then turned against me. And when the lion turned against me, I don't know what happened to me, but a holy boldness came upon me and I grabbed the lion by its hair and I tear, tore the lion. And I thought that was the end of it. But the next day there comes a bear. And the bear came and tried to eat my sheep or my sheep. And then when the bear tried to eat one of my sheep, I did the same thing. I looked at the bear and struck, struck the lion, gave a good whooping on his backside. And the, and the bear dropped the sheep and turned against me. And I did the same thing that I did yesterday. I killed the bear as well. If God gave me strength to kill the lion and the bear, then the same God is able to bring down this Goliath as well. When people are talking about their experiences to limit you, go back to your own testimony. Do you have a testimony? Do you have something that the Lord has done in your life? Can you look back and say, you know what? The Lord delivered, delivered me from that disease. The Lord delivered me in the past. The same God who delivered me in the past, he can do it again. Come on. Is there anybody who will join together with me and say, he can do it again? 
That's why I like that song, what he did yesterday, he can do it again. If he did it before, he can do it again. Come on, can I get some people to join together with me and speak back? If he did it before, he can do it again. Come on, somebody lift up your voice and say, if he did it before, he can do it again. He brought Daniel out of the lion's den. He can do it for me. He brought the Hebrew boys from the fiery pit. He can do it for me. He delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. He can do it for me as well. Come on, he's a anybody who would join together with me and say he can do it for me he delivered Peter out of the prison he delivered Paul out of the prison then I am here to say that no devil no fortress no stronghold can stop us or can hold us imprisoned if we, if God wants us to go forward we will go forward we will possess the land we will conquer hallelujah if he did it before, he can do it again. Yeah. I'm going to give you a one more chance to say it with me. If he did it before, he can do it again. Would you look at your neighbor and slap that neighbor who is tired? Slap the neighbor and say, if he did it before, he can do it again. Come on, can I speak over the people who are watching us online? Put it in the chat, type it somewhere there. If he did it before, he can do it again. Come on, say it with some sort of oomph to it. Put your back into it <laughs> and say, if he did it before, he can do it again. Saul is trying to convince David and trying to dissuade him and say to him, you know what, don't go. But David says, no, 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 no. If God did it before, God can do it again. I have some testimony of deliverance. I have some testimony of healings. I have some testimony in my back pocket. I'm going to use my testimony. That's what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 verse 1. They have overcome the devil. They have overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony. I got some testimony that will bring some breakthrough in my life. Come on. Is there anybody who will join together with me and say, I got some testimony. I got some testimony. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm going too charismatic here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so that's the third conversation, conversation with Saul. And then David goes and goes to fight against Goliath. But here's something very interesting. In between that, two things happen. One, David or Saul tries to put his garment on David. David tries to, or Saul tries to put his bronze, you know, coat and his armor on David. And David puts it on and David cannot even walk. And David takes it off and says, no, King, okay, I don't think I'm familiar with this. This is not tested by me. You can keep it yourself. I, I, I don't want it. But why is Saul trying to put that on David? Because Saul saw Goliath wear it. Saul saw the enemy wear it. And so if you're going to fight against his enemy, then you must do the same things that the enemy is doing as well. Wow. Often our failure is looking at what the world is doing and trying to imitate that. Church, we don't have to imitate the world or take the appearance and the appeal of the world. We can fight this by faith. We can go forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. What brought us till now, what brought us till here is the Holy Spirit. What brought us till now is the word of God. If it is the word of God, the prayer of the saints, and if it is the power of the Holy Spirit that brought us thus far, then we don't need no new strategy. We don't need no new, you know, gimmicks that is happening in the world. We can still rely on the Holy Spirit and we can still go forward. Come on, can I have some people who will join together with me and say, we are going back to the basics. We're just going to put our trust in the Lord and march forward. Putting that garment on David. David says, this is, I'm not take the worldly pattern. I'm just going to go with what gave me success in the past. What gave me success in the past is trusting my God. Yeah. 
What gave me victory in the past is the anointing that fell upon me. Can I encourage you this one thing? If you and I need victory and if you and I need to see growth and if you, if you and I need to see church moving forward and if you and I need to see, you know, stuff happen, let me tell you, we need to go back and do the same thing the first century saints did and that is go back and wait before the Lord. I think that we are living in an instant world where everybody wants everything so instant. We have instant coffee. We have card and we put it in the bank machine and all of a sudden the money spits out. We go into a building and put the number and takes us to the 10th floor in the elevator. We have everything so instant. We don't like waiting anymore. But the kingdom doesn't work that way. Kingdom is not instant. Kingdom works for those who are willing to wait and tarry. Come on, do I have some people tonight who would say, you know what, I will wait, wait, wait before the Lord. I'll wait for him to show up. That's what worked in the past. That's what did it in the past. That's what made Christianity grow. Praise God. And he went and picked up five stones. And I always wondered why David picked up five stones. You know why he picked up five stones? If he misses it, then he's got four more. <laughs> no, no. No, that's, that, that's not why. Well, it's good to be prepared. But when I tried to do a little more digging and research, I found out that in 2 Samuel chapter 21 from verse 15 to 22, it talks about Goliath having four brothers. Altogether, there are five brothers. So David is prepared that not only am I going to slay this giant, but everything that's going to come from that bunch, I am prepared to slay them all. Ah, he's got five stones. Can I tell you something? I think we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared to bring down the giants. We need to be prepared with stones, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. With the gifts of the Holy Spirit. With the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, sister, I saw you guys when you come in. I saw you in the parking lot. You know, I think I know you. I'm not sure if I know you, but I think I've seen you before. I see, I, I, I may have even prophesied this before, before you. I see children around you. I, I, have I said this to you? I don't know. Maybe not. Huh? Oh. What's your name? Alexis. I, I think I may... Uh, your sister, okay. I also believe, you know, you know, the Lord wants to do a healing in your family. There is this, you know, there is this, you know, Travis said this earlier, Travis said miracles. And I, I, I see that word over you. Kids around you and it's connected to, it's not even like, you know, Canadian, Caucasian kids. It's, uh, you know, kids from different countries, different nationalities, different colors. And I see miracle. I see healing, healing, emotional, physical, health-wise for both of you. Are you husband and wife? Okay. <laughs> Would you stretch your hand towards Alexis and her? What's your name? What's your name? Tyler. Would you stretch your hand towards them and declare healing in the name of Jesus? Giants will have to come down in the name of Jesus. Every giant, every attack, and every plan of the enemy, let it be canceled in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, not only victory in one area, but victory in many areas. Ripple effect, ripple effect, ripple effect. The fourth thing that I've discovered is from the fourth conversation. The fourth conversation is with Goliath. And David comes before Goliath and Goliath looks at this ruddy, handsome young man and says, <laughs> you, you young boy, you going to come and fight me? What are you doing? What you doing, bro? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, yeah, young kid, 17 year old, handsome. There's no battle scars on him. And he comes to fight against Goliath. 
And he says, you come against me with sticks and stones? What, what, what are you doing? And David replies back, I did not come against you with stick and stones. I come against you in the name of the Lord. You know, Goliath began to curse David, began to curse David. And the God in Philistine is God named Dagon. And the thing with Dagon is this, that whenever you use the name Dagon and curse somebody, they will shrivel up and they will wither away. That's the, that's the belief. And of course, it has happened in the lives of many people. As for many people died because that name was evoked, the name of Dagon. And here Goliath is evoking the name of Dagon and believing that the same thing will happen to David as well. <laughs> can I tell you something? The enemy can do whatever he wants to do. Can curse you, can place hex on you, can speak ill against you, whatever the enemy wants to do, can do against you and think that you will shrivel up. And maybe there was a time in your life you felt like you had to take a back step. But I want to declare prophetically tonight, you are not shriveling up, you are standing up. You are not shriveling up and withering away, you are standing up. In 2020 and in 2021, you felt like taking, you know, or going backwards and withering away and look like, you know, nothing is happening and it seems like you're being pushed back against a wall but I'm here to declare that the Lord wants to set some people free you are not going to, from all kinds of curses you are not going to shrivel up but you are going to stand up that sister there that I don't know what your name is but here with the white sweater uh, with the right you 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 right in the middle I hear this word the, 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 the time is coming for you to stand up I'm causing you to stand up you will not shrivel up you will not wither away you will not be you know, put to the back seat, but I'm doing some things in the spiritual atmosphere where I'm going to bring you out and I'm going to cause you to stand up. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release an anointing upon her that she's going to stand up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. People have spoken ill against you. People have, you know, behind the scenes, people have, you know, expected stuff to go wrong and go bad. But I'm here to declare tonight that every curse be broken. That every ill word spoken against you be broken. You are not going to wither up or shrivel up, but you are going to stand up in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are, there are people who look at the Bible through the lens of science. And those people who are, they, they argued and they questioned how can David bring down a great giant Goliath with a stone? They, 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 you know, they argued, they questioned, how can? Because if you sling a stone and if it is 60, 60 feet away, like a baseball court, uh, it will have about 90, say 90 mile per hour. And the force of that stone will be about 2,000 pounds. But when you look at this battleground here, there's a valley and they are standing on both sides of the valley, on, on two mountains on both sides of the valley. And so the distance is not 60 feet, the distance is 120 feet. So that, that means it's not going to be 2,000 pound power, but it's going to be cut into half, which is thousand pound power. And then, you know, working against the, what, uh, the velocity and gravity and the gravitational force and the drag and all of that, the pressure, you know, the power will significantly decrease. Hmm? And so they say that, you know, when David sling, is that a word? Sling, sling that stone in 45 degree angle because David is short and Goliath is tall. And so when he slings it in 45 degree angle, it will again cut down into half, which will be about 500,000 pounds. And they made argument and found all the different reasons to say that by the end of it, when it actually hits 
Goliath. It is so weak and feeble and Goliath is wearing this helmet and how can Goliath fall or how can Goliath die? That's the question. <laughs> the, the, the thing is this, they are looking at it scientifically. They are looking at it through the eyes of logic. They think that David killed Goliath by a sling and a stone. But the truth is this, David did not kill Goliath by a sling or a stone. It was in the name of the Lord that David brought down Goliath. Look at the way Goliath falls. Goliath did not fall backwards. Goliath fell forward. That means when the stone hit Goliath, God gave him a nice slap on the back. Goliath did not fall backwards. Goliath, the giant, fell forward because it was God who killed. It was God who brought down Goliath. Can I get some people to say it with me? There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against you not with stone, not with sling, not with sword. I come against you in the name of my God, Jesus Christ. Amen. So what's the secret? What's the secret? The secret is this. Put your stone into God's hand. The fourth conversation revealed to me that the secret of conquering giants is by putting your skills and your talents into God's hand. When you put your skill and your talent into God's hand, God will bring down your giants. God will conquer your giants and God will conquer your Goliaths. Come on, can I get some people who will join together with me and say yes? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And the first point that I said is this, can you have a vision? Can you have the vision of future? Can you have a vision of victory, have the vision of the victory that is coming in the future? Can you have that vision? Can I tell you something? David cut down Goliath's head and take Goliath's head to Jerusalem. That is very interesting, isn't it? Because... At that point, Jerusalem, were, Jerusalem was in the hands of Jebusites. Jerusalem was not part of Israel. Are, are, are you with me? Yes. And the capital at that time of Israel was Hebron, at that time. And then before that, it was Mahanim, and then before that, it was Gibeah. So Jerusalem was never the capital. We think Jerusalem, but Jerusalem became the capital of Israel way after in the time of David. So Jerusalem was not even part of Israel. But here is David taking the head of Goliath and going to a place that is not even part of Israel and burying the head in Jerusalem. Talk about seeing the future. Jerusalem was not part of Israel, but he goes and buries it in Jerusalem. Why? Because he's declaring, he's making a statement to the Jebusites, I'm coming. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be my future. It's going to be my capital. It may be in your hands right now, but I am coming for Jerusalem. And the thing is this, that any time when there is victory, they will always cut out the head of the enemy and they will always put the king's head, the enemy king's head on a pole and will lift it up so everybody can see. Jerusalem was a mountain, is a mountain. And so here is David putting the head of, Gol of Goliath on that mountain, Jerusalem. So everybody can see. Hmm. Buried, the skull, uh, bur bur buried the skull in Jerusalem. Hmm. That's very interesting. Buried the skull in Jerusalem. Goliath of where? Where is Goliath from? Goliath from Gath. Come on, Bible scholars, people. <laughs> Goliath is from where? Gath. Goliath of Gath. Goliath of Gath, his head is now buried in Jerusalem. Hmm. Goliath of Gath. Goliath of Gath. Where did Jesus die? Where was Jesus crucified? Golgotha. Huh. Goliath of Gath. 
Gol Gata, the place of skull. Are you, are, are you with me? David won the victory and took the head of Goliath of Gath and buried it in Jerusalem. And he was making a declaration into the future. My seed is coming and he will crush the head of the serpent. Come on, is there anybody tonight who will join together with me and say, see Jesus, the son of God and the son of man. He came to that place called Golgotha, the place called Skull, and he crushed the head of the serpent on that Jerusalem on the mound of Golgotha. Come on, I'm here to declare we are winning some battles. We are marching forward. We... Hey, come on. Can I get some people to join together with me? Would you stand up with me? I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Four secrets. Four secrets. Can you see victory? In the midst of your defeat. Everything looks haywire. Everything looks crazy. Everything looks like so bad. People are against you. People are so antagonistic against you. They had a face against you. They made sure they're going to be angry with you. But you are not looking at the angry faces. You're not looking at those who are against you. You are looking at the victory that is on the other side. Come on, can I get some people to join together with me and say, I'm looking at the victory on the other side. Hey, hallelujah. Two, I'm going to decide who is going to speak into my life. I won't let everybody speak into my life. Uh -uh, I'm going to flick that switch. Come on, can I get some people? Uh, I'm flicking that switch off. <laughs> you off. You, I'm not listening. Facebook, I'm not listening. <laughs> All these confusing voices, I'm not listening. I'm going to turn that switch off. I'm going to choose who is going to speak into my life. Three. What is the third one? <laughs> so, I'm not going to change my strategy based on the size of my battle. The strategy that worked for me in the past, I'm sticking to it. If it was a spirit that brought me thus far, you know, that sister with red hair, uh, 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 yellow, uh, what is it? Yeah, you, you, you. I see the month of May. The month of May. There's something significant connected to you in the month of May. What's your name? Lori. Yeah. So is there anything connected to my, uh, my birthday is in the month of May. In the month of May. There's something connected to you. And this coming, month, this coming May, this coming May 2022, just before that and leading up to it, there is going to be some fulfillments. Fulfillments. I see movement. I see moving forward. I see fulfillments coming. Month of May. That May month is the fifth month. The number of grace. We declare grace over this sister, Lori. We declare grace over Lori in the name of Jesus Christ. I see on both sides of you, I see angels. I see the hand of the Lord. I see, I see angels on both sides of you. No need to fear. I see the Lord standing with you. Angels on both sides with wings wide open. Telling you, I will protect you, I will watch over you. No evil shall enter your tent. No plague shall enter your house. Come on, can I get some people to put your hand towards it, stretch your hand towards it, and can we declare victory in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. You know, uh, Travis, you said this is the 13th year, 13th year, but, but this 14th year, you know, going into the 14th year, the 14, number 14, it's going to be even greater transitions. But now, I know you hate the word transition. You don't like that word transition. But even greater transitions. In the sense that that 14th year, you're going to see, you know, a generation, a new generation, Another layer of generation standing up. Seeds standing up. 
today's victory was only a prelude and a precursor for the coming victory. Because greater victories, 14, 14, 14, that word fulfillment, 14, connected to fulfillment. There's going to be fulfillment. From deep wells you will draw. Houses you have not built. Wells you have not dug. Vineyards you have not planted. The Lord says, I will give it into your hands. 14th will be connected to expansion. Amen. There will be paperwork that will be, you know, stapled. I see, you know, papers are stapled, but I, that's the picture I see. It's important papers. Approval papers. Approval. Approval papers. Stamped and sealed papers. Stapled together and sent to you. What should you do? Would you come, come, come up? Caris, 2022 is the year of building home. 2020, building a home. Building home, 2022. I don't know how that looks like, but home, house, 2022. That word Beth, Beth L, Beth, house. Oh, even having things of your own, have your own, have your own. Some things that you're going to own, things that you have not owned in the past. You're going to own it. Hallelujah. Put it into the Lord's hands. He will give you victory. Father, I thank you. If anyone, wants to, if anyone wants prayer, if anyone wants us to pray for you, Travis, is that okay? I don't know. Um, we can keep the social distancing, but uh, is it okay if anyone wants to come to the friend, we can pray for them? Is that okay? Yeah. So if anyone wants to be prayed for, come to the friend. We'll keep the social distancing or physical distancing. Come to the friend. We'll quickly pray for you as well. But re- let me pray and close right now. And Travis, I don't know if you want to take over. Um, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come to the throne room of grace and we declare giants are falling. Giants are coming down. This last Sunday or two Sundays ago, I heard this word. Scattered are coming back together. Whoa. Scattered. Wow. In Nehemiah's time, people were scattered. In Nehemiah's time, the children of Israel, the children of God, the church was scattered. But Nehemiah said, God, you promised to us that if we pray and if we fast and if we repent, you will bring back the scattered saints from, from the ends of the earth. And I heard this word two weeks ago on a Sunday. Scattered people, broken people are brought brought back together. Can I get some people to join together with me and say, scattered people are coming back. From where? From where? From where? From the north. From the south. From the east. From the west. Scattered people are coming back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, There's a rebuilding happening. The broken walls of Israel, the broken walls of churches, the burned gates are going to be built back again. It will not remain as ruins no more. There's going to be beauty upon those broken areas. I thank you, Jesus. We have not come this far by our own strategy. We come this far by the Spirit of God. What is started by the Spirit shall not end in the flesh. What is started in the spirit will end also by the same spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray and everybody said, Amen and Amen. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this message. We hope that you were blessed. For more information about Resurgence, including how you can take part of this great movement, visit www.liveresurgence.com.